Conflict is a part of life, but when it turns violent and divides families and communities, it makes us wonder, how did we get here? What should we do now? And what can we do better in the future? That's where I come in. I'm Dr. Govinda Clayton. I'm a senior researcher in peace processes at ETH Zurich, which is a university in Switzerland. I basically spent most of my life trying to understand how violent conflict can be resolved through communication. I work with everyone, from governments and UN officials to NGOs and community leaders, helping them to communicate more effectively. So whether you plan to have a tough conversation with a politician, your boss, or even your family, here are some key steps to pull you through. The first step to having any successful discussion is to figure out what you want and why it's important to you. Start by setting some specific and measurable goals for yourself. What outcome would be a win for everybody? Next, do a little self-check-in. Are you feeling really angry, sad, anxious, or maybe tired? If there's a chance that any of those negative emotions will get the better of you, this might not be the best time to engage in a hard conversation. So keeping calm and present really is key. Otherwise, conversations can end up like this. Channel your inner guru and start by taking a few deep and conscious breaths. Then you can start listening, but not just any kind of listening, active listening, which, by the way, does not look like this. Who's talking about you, right? Hold on, 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 hang on, hang on. The point here is to figure out each other's perspectives, not come up with a winning comeback. This means you need to be genuinely curious and ask questions. Pro tip, it helps to talk less and listen more. But active listening is not just about understanding the content of what is said. It also means acknowledging the underlying feelings and the emotion that's behind the message. It's about making sure that the other party just really feels heard. So pay attention to the non-verbal cues like a person's pitch, their tone, or their body language. And the best part is, you can be an active listener without even having to agree. Okay, now you're in a conversation. You're gonna to need to try and look past the people's positions. Focus instead on their interests. Imagine an iceberg. The positions are on the surface. That's what people say they want. The interests are what's hidden below. That's why people want something. This is about their underlying reasons or motivations. And once you figure out those interests, congratulations, you are well on your way finding that common ground. And finally, no matter how difficult the conversation might be, just acknowledge the other person's point of view and show gratitude for what they brought to the conversation. We often only remember the peak and final moments of any experience. So if you don't want the dialogue to hit a dead end, it's important to end it on a positive note. These days, it's really easy to live in an echo chamber where we just talk to those who agree with us. It's way more challenging to talk to those whose positions offend or maybe even repulse us. But if you take the time to set goals, actively listen, ask questions, and focus on those common interests, you can be a powerful force for positive change.